you guys so much for coming. Uh, my name is Curtis Garner. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Verdant Robotics. What is Verdant Robotics? Uh, we do uh, smart spraying. So we use computer vision, artificial intelligence, and an aimable sprayer to see things and spray things, whether that's weeds or whether we're micro-fertilizing plants. So uh, computer vision, artificial intelligence, and an actuation thing. So we have uh, multi-crop operations. Uh, we have paid contracts in carrots, garlic, and onions with some of the largest processors. And we also uh, are looking at doing a lot of other crops like uh, leafy greens and lettuce. Our machine has been developed by a bunch of uh, folks out of the self-driving car industry. So it's applying the, the self-driving uh, car tech stack to uh, agriculture. So we operate uh, robotics as a service, and so the, we can provide immediate ROI to the farmer. There's no capital outlay uh, for the farmer, so we can come and provide him savings immediately. Are there any questions? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, uh, when are we going to be working in the fields here, and do we have any plans for the Midwest? We're in the fields today, so we're, we're operational today. We can uh, service farmers acres uh, today, so we're commercial uh, now. So the robots are operating uh, every day, uh, day in, day out, and we could also do 24-7 operations. And then there are plans to go to the Midwest, but those are uh, several years down the road. Yeah, so we have uh, two robots operating right now. A third uh, will be operational within a few weeks. And then this machine is a six row. The next one will be a 12 row machine and we'll do uh, 1.75 miles per hour. And so we'll be able to cover roughly 68 acres a day and use roughly 95% less chemicals than water. What are your biggest challenges? Our biggest challenges to scale is actually building the robots. So the farmers are, facing existential crisis right now between labor availability and labor cost. Labor costs are rising 14% year over year and there's no uh, slowing down of, of the grow, growing costs. And so we're here to help the farmers uh, arrest that cost growth today and provide them savings and uh, help them with their labor availability uh, problem. So uh, the robot uh, does a perfect job every time. It never gets tired, it never sleeps, um, and it, it can run 24-7. So uh, we took a different strategy than most in the industry. We call the strategy autonomy last. So my co-founders all came out of the self-driving car world. One was number three at a company called Zooks. The other was the director of simulation for cruise automation, which is GM's self-driving car effort. We understood that the driver um, is a very small part of the per acre charge that uh, weeding service is. And so we focused on making the autonomous sharpshooter um, the value creation for the farmer. So we will turn on autonomy when it matters, but right now uh, we're perfectly fine uh, having a driver in the seat. Um, he's also the, the one man weed assassin. He's the, he's the, the guy that drives the, the tractor to the field. He fills it up with water and the material. He performs a service. He washes it, he puts it back to bed. If anything goes wrong, he's a tech support and mechanic. So uh, one of the comments earlier that was on a panel that I'd like to, to address as well is that, you know, a lot of the agriculture jobs that are there today is uh, living wage and we want to make that a thriving wage. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the question was, uh, building robots was our biggest, biggest obstacle, and so do we have people waiting for them? Uh, absolutely, we have a lot of farmers that are very upset with us that we're not in their field today. So. With uh, carrots, carrots are coming in and out of the ground every day, so that provides us a lot of iteration cycles and opportunities to stub our toe and make the machine better. Uh, garlic and onions are, are annuals and uh, planted kind of once a year, but we have operations from uh, El Centro and Yuma to Washington. We're also active in uh, apples, cherries, and pears, and so there's a different vehicle that has a different form factor. One of the things that we bring that's special is we have the ability to measure the crop so what do we do we index act and discover so we index physical space so much like google could create an index of the web that all the world's librarians couldn't we index physical space so all the world's agronomists couldn't create the map of the field um, that we can with uh, computers and so we're making agriculture amenable to computation so then we could take advantages of 
inter uh, correlating and comparing and closing a data science control loop around creating bigger, larger, more profitable food that is super nutritious. But when we say building a robot is an issue, is it supply chain issues? Uh, there are supply chain issues. COVID has affected us greatly, uh, shipping. So the ability to get capacitors and computer chips and cameras, uh, things that are coming out of countries like China have been very difficult for us to get. We got ahead of it. We saw the writing on the wall, so we bought up a large stock, a large inventory uh, for our current build, which has helped us to scale and to be not uh, slowed down by the supply chain disruptions, but we are absolutely uh, facing the supply chain uh, disruptions. So I'm very excited about the investment that the United States is making in their infrastructure and onshoring some of the manufacturing of semiconductors. So the question is, what type of knowledge is required to operate the robot? Is it anything different than now? Uh, the answer is uh, no re uh, knowledge required. Uh, I will train you. Um, very, very excited about the workforce development and upskilling our current agricultural workers. The one thing that I've done is been able to travel internationally and, and see how other countries treat the agricultural workers and how it's a blue collar job, that it's uh, respectable. and I'm excited that uh, we're going to have that transformation here in the United States and so um, we're not going to leave our workers behind. The folks that are current irrigators and tractor drivers and field workers, um, we're absolutely going to train them up. They've already displayed the work ethic, the dignity of the work, uh, this is the work that they like to do and we're going to skill them up and train them. Probably the only difference that they have for us is uh, training them how to use computers. Uh, but over time, that's even going to get uh, more uh, easy as well. As we continue to mature the system and make things uh, more accessible, and it's okay, uh, make things more accessible, get the laptop out of the tractor, make it to be uh, a screen with push buttons, and we don't have to repair and diagnose. We've got a lot of PhDs in, in the Silicon Valley that can uh, remote in, uh, in SSH into the robots, and repair and diagnose from, from afar. So, rural. Uh, connectivity is uh, is something that we're incredibly interested in and would love for the industry to support all the efforts there as well.